Hello there and welcome to Season 5, Episode 6 of the Bitcoin Takeover Podcast. I am Vlad and my guest today is Nopara73, who is a wallet developer and not the developer of any wallet. He has worked on his own while traveling through Asia to develop Wasabi Wallet, which is the most popular desktop privacy wallet for Bitcoins. And it has so many great privacy features from coin joins and all the way to a Tor implementation and all the way to pushing you to only use addresses. I mean, receiving addresses only one time. And it's an overall great experience. If you ask me, it's one of the best wallets ever. And in recent months, it has even added support for a full node for your hardware wallets. There's a lot going on and it's turning out to be one of the best mobile uh, not mobile sorry one of the best desktop wallets ever and i hope that they get a mobile version too because it's really great so hello nopara hi vlad thanks for having me it's really good to have you and i have been craving basically for somebody who can come on the show and explain what coin joints are and how these wallets that we have nowadays are different from the tumblers and other services that were mixing your coins in the early days? Sure. Um, <clears throat> sure, let's get right into it. So coin joins is a really simple concept. When you build a Bitcoin transaction, then you don't if you don't sign it, then that Bitcoin transaction, while properly built, it is not signed, so it is invalid. And we can use this concept to, to get many people together, to build together a Bitcoin transaction, a big one, with many inputs and many, many outputs, with many users contributing to inputs. And at the end, if one of the user does not see the correct amount, the, the correct outputs, his desired outputs, then he's not going to sign the transaction. So the transaction is not going to be valid. Um, this, this is the magic, magic of CoinJoin that uh, you cannot lose your money. At least you would have to make a very, very bad implementation if, if, if if anyone would lose money with coin joins. So this is the security aspect of coin joins. This is trustless. That's uh, that's that's coin joins. Uh, privacy things are more nuanced and complex there, but uh, I'm not sure we, we want to go into that because because we mainly want to talk about pay to endpoint here, right? Which is a special kind of coin join where both the receiver and the sender of the transactions participate. Both the receiver and the sender of the payment participate in the same transaction, which uh, results in interesting properties, which I don't think anyone uh, knows exactly that what it results in but uh, but but there are but the the ideas there seems very very promising for example such transaction look like just a regular bitcoin transaction and that can throw off blockchain analysis i mean that's really interesting because as far as i could read the first ever bitcoin client created by Satoshi Nakamoto, had this feature to send your coins to another IP address and the other person had to be online at the same time and could receive the coins without generating an address. But as time went by, the feature has been removed and pay to endpoint is somewhat similar to that concept because it's direct, it's truly peer to peer. Yeah, so let me see. Pay to endpoint, the naming of it at least, has came out of a coin join meeting where many privacy researcher and Bitcoin core contributors have um, have participated and some of them would like to stay anonymous. So I just I'm just going to 
to say those who actually gave their name to, to that meeting, which was, let's see, Adam Beck, uh, Matthew Highwood from Blockstream, um, Dane Gershoni from Stratis, he's not working at Stratis anymore, um, who has uh, Adam Gibson, you know, join market, and a couple of other people. So, and in that meeting, we thought, we thought about the idea of, I wrote a blog post a while ago, which is called Caster Fuck Wallet, um, where the idea was that we could make many kind of different transactions and that could throw off blockchain analysis. And I wrote that blog, blog post based on Adam Gib based on a presentation of Adam Gibson, um, where one of the one of the idea was that what if the receiver puts some UTXOs into the transaction too and what would happen there. And now the now we know that there was a feature Satoshi implemented back then which was called pay to IP. So you could give an IP address to someone else and then you could negotiate the transaction with with them that what kind of transactions you want to to build. And well we would have called this this sort of thing what we came up with pay to IP but that wouldn't be a very correct name because we didn't want to constrain to pay to IP to, to IP addresses because you could give uh, domain, uh, just a web address, like, okay, I don't have to give an example of <laughs> what, uh, what uh, address is, and also an uh, onion domain. So the generalization of the IP is endpoint. So it, it becomes pay to endpoint. And the scheme that looked the most promising that could, could it could be achieved with this pay to endpoint concept where the receiver and the sender builds up a connection with each other is called pay join. Uh, we did not call it pay join back then. Uh, we called it the sender receiver scheme, which is a terrible name because it doesn't, I uh, know, it just sounds lame. Uh, after that, Basta, Mr. Basta, from Basta Bit uh, came, wrote a bit uh, between improvement proposal where he called it uh, Basta Pay. And then later um, Adam Gibson implemented it to join market and he called it Pay Join. And then the Pay Join name seemed to stick. So that's the that's the story with the naming there. Oh yeah, and there were there was another other side talk there that these samurai guys uh, said they uh, came up with this idea before in their internal conversations, and they're gonna call it Kahoot uh, or Stowaway. Sto yeah, Stowaway. And um, okay, so so they did, and um, yeah, th this is actually pretty interesting. So so they did implement pay join uh, after that. Uh, one of the first ones we implemented it, uh, but he, they implemented it in a way where you have to show QR codes to another person in the wallet, and you have to show it multiple times. So that's how the transmission of data is going. So for me, this does not, uh, this is this is pay join, but this is not pay to endpoint because you don't show the QR code to establish a connection between the receiver and sender, which would be classified as pay to endpoint, but the QR code is actually the transmission protocol and back and forth so 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 that's why it would be pay join
although you could you could make the case that uh, the, uh, showing each other QR codes that that would that would classify as pay to endpoint is just just another other method anyway um, not important so the thing with pay to endpoint that it has much larger potential than than pay join because with pay to endpoint you could do a lot more things for example you could do merge avoidance uh, meaning the sender gives you multiple bitcoin addresses instead of just one bitcoin address uh, so that 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 would be neat to or knapsack mixing where you would optimize the possible uh, number of subsets in the transaction and that's how you would you would you would create your output amounts or, or just simply trying to create equal amounts or or one of the most most exciting thing about pay to endpoint would be to 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 actually negotiate with the receiver that if you are going to send an on-chain transaction or a lightning network transaction and the the users of the wallet wouldn't even have to know about it that oh this was a lightning transaction or this was a this was a on-chain bitcoin transaction so so pretty cool things are possible here and let me see my concern and it's not really a concern my problem is with the current pay to endpoint implementations is that they are using bitcoin urls which which is fine and it's working uh, uh, but i kind of have larger ambitions for it so what i would like to see happening is that if i give you a bitcoin address then you can either send me the money or some magic establishes a connection between me and you based on just that bitcoin address uh, i think it's important to not ruin the existing user experience of the bitcoin wallet so so you could just give bitcoin addresses to each other like like always and and, and that would be cool uh, that's not how it was implemented um so this bitcoin URL stuff is is already used in merchant scenarios when you are paying for a paying to a merchant and that that works perfectly so i'm i'm not uh i i don't have problems with that in in in, in that way uh and and also I'm, I'm fully supporting because well finally a privacy feature is implemented that is not only uh helps your privacy but actually helps uh, so people say it helps every everyone else's privacy uh, that's not really correct uh, there are still patterns there but what would be more correct to say it helps more people's privacy so i need to ask you about the main differences in terms of drawbacks between coin joints and pay to endpoint is any of them more efficient in terms of blockchain space and number of transactions necessary to reach privacy? Um, it's a good question. I mean, pay to endpoint doesn't really provide much privacy for you, does it? It it provides some, but but its its goal isn't really to provide privacy. It's it's a uh, is to trick blockchain analysis to 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 make sure it has it, it, it has more of an accumulating effect on on the whole network's fungibility than than your your personal privacy because what happens on the blockchain is still like even if they they don't know that's a pay to endpoint transaction they know that there are parties those are transacting so it, it's not like you would you would hide in an anonymity set or something it just makes it harder to in, interpret what exactly happened in the transaction but it doesn't really hide that uh, you are transacting with, with with who so that's that's what coin joins uh well pay to 
pay join is a coin join. So that, that's what, uh, let's say, equal amount coin joins do, trying to hide that who who pays to who in, in an anonymity set. Would you say that, to some extent, chain analysis can identify coin joins? And maybe that they, they don't figure out where the coins come from, but they can look at the outputs from before the coin join happened and possibly find some identification there. And if there is something that they can do in this regard, then what can users do to protect themselves? Uh, well, it's not to some extent, it's 200% that uh, coin join is identifiable 100%. It's, it's not a... Uh, it's not a secret, you know. It's uh, it, it's it's something that's quite inherent in in, in the privacy community. That uh, you know, you you cannot hide in in a crowd without that crowd would be identified. If you are using Monero, then the crowd is the Monero users. So Monero transactions can be identified and distinguished from Bitcoin transactions. So, so, so yes, uh, that's that's definitely identifiable. It's it's more like a social problem that uh, if if you don't want to tell me how much money you have, then then you do coin joins, and that makes you a criminal because you don't want to tell everyone how much money you have. You know that that that's a strange logic there. Right. So, would you say that right now Wasabi Wallet is in a situation where it is censorship resistant? Because we have seen along the years many CoinJoin and Tumblr implementations that were actually centralized and had a company coordinating the whole operation, being shut down by government agencies or just closing down for various reasons. How is Wasabi more resistant to this kind of situation? It, it isn't at all. Like, uh, it wasn't a design goal to to build, build something that's censorship resistant. The design goal was privacy. It's, you know, it's hard enough to be at privacy than, than, than building something censorship resistant. So it's, it's, it's a gamble, right? So until they, they they let us protect other people's privacy and we can go on and otherwise don't but, but again like things like let's say join market uh well it's it's more decentralized because it only needs a bullet bulletin board as a server but again like it needs a bullet bulletin board which they are using for irc uh so if you shut down the tire C, then people don't find each other. So it's private uh, privacy in Bitcoin right now is not censorship resistant. Monero, Zcash, these these would be altcoins would be a good good way to put a, a good good examples what they are censorship resistant because that's the function of the blockchain. To, to be censorship resistant. In fact, it's, it's, it's quite interesting that the, the literature of trying to build an electronic money is it had two, well, three issues identified, and the three issues are how do you how do you become how do you protect your privacy on the network level? So that's where the anonymity networks, uh, Tor, Onions, Mixnets, I2P, that's where all these things are, are uh, trying to, to, to make advances. The other issue is that how do you build money that's private? So, and, and this is where the eCash, uh, show me an eCash literature research literature is, 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 is building upon, uh, implementations are locking behind, because of course it's, it's these are centralized systems, but, of, but uh, we can take a lot of ideas from, from them. 
at least. And, and the third one is that how do you build the money that cannot be shut down? And that's what Bitcoin solved. Now, some altcoins are trying to bring together the privacy and the decentralization uh, in, into one, one thing, uh, one blockchain. And, and good luck for them. I don't think that's the way to go because that's not how human progress works. Uh, human progress is building on top of pre-existing work up until the point where that, that, that mess that we created just so much worse than the new, new altcoins would be uh, that the, the new altcoins just, just take over slowly. So, oh yeah, so there was this, this three direction and, and with Bitcoin we solved the decentralization. The Ikesh guys are trying to figure out the anonymity, the fungibility part of it and protecting your privacy with, with different anonymity networks is, 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 is something, something else too. And if we could bring these three together, that would be really cool if we could bring this three straight together into Bitcoin, uh, that would be really cool. So Bitcoin is only missing privacy, but I don't think it will ever be fungible at the same time, because every coin ever created has a cryptographic hash, which demonstrates when it was created, where it was mined, what time, you know, all of these indicators. So you cannot say that one Bitcoin created today is the same as one mined in 2010. And you can discriminate between the two if you want. You know, if you ask the same question one month ago, then I would have 100% agree with you that uh, Bitcoin privacy is kind of, uh, kind of lost. That we, uh, I didn't see much advances or ways to improve it uh, a month ago, but a month ago we started to work on the new mixing technology with Wasabi and, and it, it, it's not even this mixing technology, but just the sheer amount of research that's being done in eCash and cryptography that could could help us make Bitcoin ultimately more private. Just, just one example uh, would be coin swaps, the kind of coin swaps where you have to swap at the same time, but you you can make a swap preparing transaction uh, at at one time, and the other guy could even choose to spend uh, your transaction like a year from now, uh, and this would be completely indistinguishable from normal transactions. Now, what this would res result is that you can look at the blockchain, you can make your heuristics, but you could not make any conclusion on what coin teleported where in, 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 in years time. That really does sound fascinating and it can be useful to do this kind of swap that takes a year or more so that nobody can actually find the link between the two transactions that happen. But how do you make sure that this doesn't get broken and somebody, for example, the first person to receive the coin and before the swap happens, manages to spend it? I don't know how this scheme could work. Um, Taj Dria, one of the inventor of the Lightning Network, uh, presented this idea for us. So there is definitely some something in it. I mean, he's he's really smart. I did. I can't claim I I, I understood completely the scheme. Uh, but 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 uh, my point was with this is that uh, this broadened my horizon on on what kind of things are possible to improve Bitcoin privacy, which I could never have guessed before uh, so I became more bullish on 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 how Bitcoin privacy, privacy will will end up in the future.
So there is always this debate about which wallet you should be using. And I have had a guest in the second episode of this season. His name is Leo Vandersleb and he works on Mycelium. But when he doesn't work on Mycelium, he has created a website that's called WalletScrutiny.com. And there you can find his reviews based on the verifiability of each wallet and whether or not it's open source. But he only t took a look at wallets that are in the Android App Store, so only mobile ones. But it's still a big concern, right? So if you could recommend somebody who is new to Bitcoin, a desktop and a mobile wallet, which ones would they be? I would recommend, well, that depends on, does the new person speak English? If yes, then I would recommend Wasabi. If no, then I would uh, recommend something else that has it in his language. Uh, on mobile, I would recommend Green Wallet, both iOS and and Android, because I I don't have much expectations from mobile wallets, but or or, or generally in Bitcoin wallet, but. Uh, what I, I really care about that this works and stable and when you click on the send button it does not freeze or or things like that right so that that's the that's the most important thing for me that it, it does not uh, give a heart attack to the user and uh, I found green wallet such a wallet oh uh, so that's why I, I think it's called it. blockstream green right now Oh yes, black, black stream green. But it's available on both Android and iOS. And what I like about it is that it has Tor. It has some sort of two of two multi-sig that basically offers an extra layer of protection just in case you make a bad transaction or somebody takes a hold of your wallet but doesn't have access to your email. Yes, it it it, it does some some multi-sig stuff and. And by me using it and not knowing about it, that not knowing exactly what's happening there, that just means they they did a terrific job in in obstructing the technical details from me, the user, right? Uh, <laughs> so right now, if you think about privacy wallets, you have to make a choice between Wasabi and Samurai. And if you're technically minded, you can join the join market as I guess anyone can agree that it's the more decentralized and sophisticated method of mixing your coins. But other than that, for everyday use, it comes down to Samurai and Wasabi. And how would you describe the differences between your wallet and Samurai's? So first of all, I think Join market has a bad on ramp experience, but if you somehow figure out where to find the exit to download and run it, then it, it really no different than a normal wallet. Uh, a bit more technical, but not that big of a deal. So, so, so let's just not say join market is not that user friendly because it's always the biggest. The largest problem that I encounter when I want to install a new join market version is to to go through their their walls of of text and figure out where to download the binaries from. Anyway, with, with that out of the way, uh, no, don't use Samurai. Um, I well, I'm definitely biased, but <clears throat> Samurai works in a way where you fire up your samurai wallet and you send your, <clears throat> your you send your XPUB key to their server so their server can tell you your wallet balance and that way you can build your transactions and this is of course not good because if you do coin joins then they can see that uh, from one of the input address and one of the output address corresponds to the same XPUB key uh, without any difficulties and I think the marketing that they are doing is trying to hide this fact uh, pretty 
pretty strongly. And one of the newest things that they came up with is that if you are using Dojo, uh, which is their full node integration, uh, then 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 you you get all the benefits of coin joins. But that's just not true because uh, they have five participant coin joins, and let's say four of them are using samurai without their full node implementation then you don't need to be a genius to figure out which <laughs> which which input and output pairs you cannot de-anonymize it's it's exactly the one that you don't have the expert keys for and for this they came up with oh but 60 percent of their users are using samurai with their full node implementations which is a ridiculous lie uh, which cannot be verified but again like if you look at the number of people who are running a full node a bitcoin full node 100 gigabyte uh, 300 gigabyte thing with a lot of processing power on their laptops and how many people are not using that how many people are using light wallets and how many people are using like just Coinbase, the, the full node Bitcoin user percentage would be like 0 0.00001, something like that. And, and that's why the 60% claim is, is just, just, just ridiculous because it does not seem so. It does not be be consistent with with any other experience that we had before and and anyway like like you would have to trust them to oh yeah and how do they know that anyway like uh, so does that mean okay let's assume that 60 percent is true that would mean uh you are only mixing with with three other people instead of five and also the only way to know that is that they are actually logging your your expat keys, which means they they aren't trying to throw away that information. They are logging it. They see that in the coin joins, three people don't have the expat. But anyway, you don't even have to go go there because it's just a ridiculous claim. Yeah. yeah sometimes the discussion on Twitter is that. Wasabi wallet is only for the rich coiners because getting into a coin join will require an amount of minimum 0 0.1 BTC usually. Sometimes it's 0 0.09 something, but it rounds up in this interval. And they say that with Samurai, you can do coin joins with smaller amounts. So it's therefore for the people who don't own many Bitcoins and want to do coin joins of their own. Can you elaborate on why there is this difference and why you need a larger amount of Bitcoin with Wasabi? Sure, because the tech is not there unless you are cutting corners. Uh, there is this thing called denial of service attack on coin joints, which can happen in a way that, let's say in Wasabi, our minimum denomination is 0 0.1 Bitcoin. So if you have 10 Bitcoin, you divide it up to 0 0.1 Bitcoins, then you would be able to deny of service attack 100 rounds. Uh, that would mean coin joins would not happen for two hours or something like that. Uh, now, if you go lower, like what is their, their smallest denomination, 0 0.005 Bitcoin, then you can divide the 10 Bitcoin down to 0 0.005 Bitcoin and you can make sure that no coin joins are happening for, I don't know, for a month or years, something like that, because, because that's how those protection works. If an input misbehaves, then that input gets excluded from the next coin join round. And that's that's the those protection of these coin join services. So why they are doing that is because no one is denier of service attacking. So they get away with cutting corners here. 
there are other ideas how to how to fix the denial of service attacks and in our next mixing technology we are going to explore them properly so we can we can uh, we can make the minimum amount lower without actually compromising on security and i'm cautiously optimistic that we will be able to do that so that's quite a simple explanation really but Samurai has tried to make it more accessible, but it comes at the expense of risking to get more denial of service attacks. Is that in plain language what happens there? Yes. Okay. So I also want to ask you about the user interface of Wasabi because it underwent many changes in the last few months. And where is it heading and what are you planning to add in the near future? To be honest, I don't know because two, three weeks ago, I started uh, researching. We, we actually hired the cryptographer Istvan Sheresh and nothing much, who, who, who is like Greg Maxwell. He knows everything. <laughs> and, uh, and I don't, uh, I don't micromanage the, the software's development anymore. I don't review everything that's happening there. But um, generally, what I'm seeing is that um, whoever has has good ideas then, and implements them, and those features, those things are clean, then it gets merged. So it's more of an organic process than a top-down approach of of of, of development, which is a which has its, its drawbacks and it has its advantages. Right now, I'm concentrating on the mixing technology and let the UI, UX, and code part to other people. This is how we share share the work. That's actually interesting because you are the mastermind behind the whole Wasabi Wallet project, but at the same time, it seems like you're stepping down but doing more research. So is it possible that you'll start another privacy project or will all of your research show and get materialized in Wasabi Wallet? So how I think about it is this might be my last big journey with Wasabi Wallet. I mean, you are human too, so... You you might be able to connect with me in, in, in the way that I spent five years uh, without really much weekends on working hard on this project. And I might be interested in other things too. Uh, so, so, so possibly this, this new mixing technology will be, will be my, my last big project. And I, I certainly look at it as a piece of art <laughs> rather than some some job that has to be done <laughs> yeah so what 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 we want to do here is is basically fix all the all the problems with, with wasabi which which are one of these you already mentioned this uh, minimum amount thing the other thing would be there is a change uh, there is often a change in the coin joins which don't get de anonymized. Of course, we can show red coins in the wallet, which is fine, but what would be actually cool if there would not be change and 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 that's what what we are trying to to fix. Uh, what else? It would be really cool if you could send money directly in the coin joins instead of just mixing to yourself what kind of money experience is that you know <laughs> mixing your money <laughs> like that that that's not 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 cool it would be much cooler if you could send money in the coin joys that's actually one of the features that i am 100 percent sure that we will be able to deliver uh, maybe there will be some change less but some uh, maybe there will be a minimum amount to register, but it will be it will be much smaller. But there might be. Um, well, anyway, 
so we would like to fix the user experience of gaining your privacy with with Wasabi, and 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 that's our our focus now. Oh, also like like uh, it's it's not like we aren't paying attention for the pay to endpoint stuff. I mean, we are uh, cooks from BTC Pay server. Uh, came and, and put down a proof of concept implementation that I cleaned up and then Lucas actually fixing it up even further. So that probably is going to get into Wasabi 2 at some point in the next uh, month or so. So so yeah, pay, pay join is, is definitely a really cool concept because you're not only providing some privacy for those who are doing the pay join but also for, for some other people who has the same transaction patterns as you. Uh, you know, it's really admirable that you have been working for five years or possibly more just on this idea of making Bitcoin more private. And I recall a conversation that I had with you, I think it was in Riga, where I asked you about something related to liquid and you told me yeah but that's not really bitcoin even though liquid has confidential transactions but do you still think that to some extent moving your coins into liquid and doing confidential transactions and returning and possibly doing some coin joins is a more efficient way of mixing mm, no not really i mean Confidential transactions simply means the amounts are not known by other people. They are, the, the amounts will still be known where you are rolling onto liquid or rolling off to liquid. Uh, but again, you would you would need some some mixing on liquid in order to 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 be able to to gain recipient and sender privacy, so, so to, to break the link. Uh, would it be more efficient if, if, if that mixing would be there with confidential transactions? I would say, yes, that would be more efficient. Um, now we can actually go back to, to what I was talking about, that Bitcoin solved the decent, decentralization problem and eCash is solving the, the privacy problem, right? But if you roll onto Liquid, it's still decentralized, uh, but it is not as decentralized as you would like it to be, because you would like it to be as decentralized as Bitcoin is. So that's why I, I can't say I'm not interested in building stuff for Liquid, it just, that's why I don't prioritize that because liquid is for a small set of users of Bitcoin. So do you think that ultimately something related to privacy of Bitcoin is going to happen on a side chain? And I did see some initiatives with altcoins trying to do Mimble Wimble side chains. Is that a good idea mm-hmm. at all or should you fix the base layer? Well, I mean, for side chains, whoever came up with side chain ideas, like you know the the pure side chain stuff, where the side chain is just as trustless as and decentralized as the main chain, or maybe not as decentralized but just as trustless. Uh, that kind of side chains, the the Bitcoin uh, protocol improvements don't seem to be happening. People don't seem to think those are good compromises to, to build that kind of side chains. And that's my my guess is why no one is building member in the side chain for Bitcoin because again you would have to do some federated peg or something like that, like what Blockstream is doing, which is uh, which is good but not ideal. Okay, so that's a vague description to say it's good, but not ideal, but I'll take it. (laughs) So I have a few closing questions about what Wasabi is doing because you have added support for hardware wallets, and I think that's very nice. 
I think it's a lot better to connect your ledger mm -hmm. to Wasabi than to connect your ledger to Ledger Live, which is like their panopticon. They can see every transaction, use their full nodes. It's not really the best design, but if you use it with Wasabi, you have network level privacy. You also get to do coin joins. Plus, you know, you're much more in charge and you can run your own full node. Yes, definitely. Uh, if you use a hardware wallet with the Sabi, then you gain network level privacy. And you are, of course, not exposing your XPUBs to anyone. Uh, you also have coin control. Uh, the pain point here, why I was against implementing hardware wallet, but I had a brain fuck and I implemented it anyway, is, is that coin joins are not possible with hardware wallet. It's, it's not an inherently impossible thing. It is definitely possible, but I don't want to make hardware wallet implement stuff until our coin join implementation is actually final, because that's when we know that when to implement what what exactly to implement into hardware wallets, right? We are doing a new research into coin joins, and I believe uh, that will be the end all of coin joins. So you will not be able to come up with a better protocol than that, except uh, if you would want to decentralize it. Which, which is a uh, good luck for you. I, I hope you succeed. But, but the point is that from a privacy point of view, you won't won't have a better coin join implementation than what what we are trying to research now. And after that is implemented, then we finally be a, we will finally be able to go to the hardware wallet guys and and. And, and push them into implement what we need for, for their hardware wallets to be able to do coin joins. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's ambitious that's to allow anyone to do coin joins from the hardware wallet. But let me ask you something else, and I get back to pay join or pay to endpoint, whatever. Actually, that's the whole point because Samson Mao has tweeted that the concept of coin joins has obtained. And Chainalysis companies and governments think of it as something bad, and that's why it's better to call pay join pay to end point. Do you have any opinion on that? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, so, 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 pay to end point versus pay join. It's a uh, so pay join is technically a coin join. Pay to endpoint uh, technically doesn't mean much, but to 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 have a stable connection between the sender and the receiver, and they can negotiate what kind of transactions they want to to create. Um, why the pay to endpoint got into this this pay join stuff is because. Well, for some some more, he thinks pay to endpoint is a better name, and he's the marketing guy, and not me, so he's probably right. But again, it's it's technically incorrect, so so I would not call a pay pay join pay to endpoint. Like think about this like this: every pay join is a pay to endpoint transaction, but not every pay to endpoint transaction is a pay join. That's definitely something to reflect on. So possibly we need to find a better name as the concepts are technically <laughs> yeah. different. I mean, one includes the other, but the other doesn't necessarily include the other one. So yeah, uh, I guess we need a better name. And my last question to you is much more general, is much more about what we do in this space. And it concerns the fact that we often say, don't trust verify, but unless we are technically capable to verify or have the capacity or time to verify every line of code before running a software, then who can we trust? You see, think about this don't trust verify as a meme. 
uh, not sure if you seen Bitstein presentation from Bitblock Boom 2019, and here he explained that uh, there is a difference between rhetoric and argumentation. Uh, argumentation is the way of figuring out the truth, and rhetoric is something that you tell people who don't want to figure out the truth. So that's what you are, but that's what you put in your your t-shirts, or that's what you tweet about. Like, don't trust verify. Number go up. Million dollar Bitcoin baby. This gentleman, you know, this kind of things, which 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 are which are memes, which which sounds good. Uh, but but again, this don't trust verify. If, if you you want to go really deep into this meme, then then that's a really huge rabbit hole there. Like uh, <laughs> like take Bitcoin Core, which is the most don't trust verify thing in the world. But you have to look at the source code. Do these developers look at the code of the underlying library well probably yeah they do but do they actually look at the assembly codes to verify that that everything is correct there and anyway it has to be run on windows mac and linux and you can't verify that the the platforms that that the wallet is running on is is, is actually really doing what you you think it's doing so where I would say where the sweet spot is that if the product is open source, then uh, that's a pretty good sign that uh, that that's something that the developers want you to to actually know what's happening on 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 their their wallet as you are using that. Now you can go, of course, deeper with reproducible builds. Uh, I I don't know, like like you know, it's a meme that that could could be a good title of a, of a research. That what does it really mean to don't trust verify? Because it means a lot of things, and 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 someone could research all the different possible things that it it means. Right, so referring to Bitstein, and that's Michael Goldstein's presentation from Bitblock Boom. I think he referenced Schopenhauer's work, The Art of Controversy, where he tells the difference between dialectics and what was the other one? <laughs> so dialectics is debating and rhetoric, which is just memes, just a few short phrases that you tell somebody when you want to quickly escape an argument. Yes, you know, he made me feel like a lamb in between a bunch of wolves on Twitter. I mean, I, I actually really had no idea that uh, that uh, he, he said so many things that maybe for you it seems obvious, but I was like, oh boy, what's happening here? There is a whole other dimension of thinking that I did not even know about. Yeah, I mean, Twitter as a medium is limited, so you can only write 280 or something characters in one tweet, and you won't find anyone to explain all of their thoughts in tweets. So there has to be some sort of limitation, or they have to self-censor to some extent when they express their thoughts. So I can understand that tweeting and posting online memes and stuff is rhetoric because you say something to the public and possibly they're going to find their own interpretation of what you said. But if you really want people to understand what you're doing, then you need to write long blog posts, you need to write articles and books and stuff that actually explains and advances science, you know, because otherwise we just get stuck in this endless loop of people just making fun of stuff and i don't think that's very yeah you're i don't think it's productive right. but it saves you time sometimes when you don't have to explain everything you just you you go satoshi and say if you how does it go 
I don't have to explain it to you, sorry. That's the end of it. But if you don't believe me and don't trust me, I, I don't have enough time. For... Anyway, it's like that. Sometimes you just get tired and you either write something short that people can read and get some idea from it or you spend your life explaining yourself to other people without doing anything productive for yourself. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's well, well said. So thank you very much, Nopara. I think your input is invaluable in this space. You have put a lot of work into this privacy project and I hope it comes to fruition in the way that you want and expect because I can't think of anything in this world that is worth five years of hard work. And most of the times you didn't even get paid for it. It was just you on your time, just working on this Bitcoin project. Yeah, thank, thank you, Rod. It, it was fun and, and I definitely got everything out of Wasabi that I was hoping for. I was just hoping for to be at, be at something that, that has people's privacy and and I think that goal has been reached uh, a long time ago. So yeah, new, new things are on the horizon. Thank you, Vlad. Thank you for having me.